Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5's Public Transit Service Development Program Grant Application Guidance Training for the 2020 application year. The goals of the Service Development Grant Application Training are to prepare agencies to complete eligible and competitive applications, familiarize applicants with service development program requirements, identify project evaluation criteria, review fiscal and managerial requirements to participate in the program, and discuss best practices in project development. Today's presentation has four main parts. First, we'll discuss the Public Transit Service Development Program's purpose and eligibility requirements. Next, we'll review the criteria by which all project proposals will be evaluated. Then, we'll describe the process leading up to and following award. The last section, the main part of the presentation, will provide guidance on each component of the service development grant application, including requirements and recommendations. The Public Transit Service Development Program is a state-funded grant program enacted by the Florida Legislature to provide initial funding for special projects. The program is authorized in Chapter 341, Florida Statutes, and specific program guidelines are provided in the FDOT Procedure Topic Number 725-030-005. This discretionary program is selectively applied to determine whether a new or innovative technique or measure can be used to improve or expand public transit services. In order to be eligible to receive a service development award, applicants must be public agencies providing or implementing public transit services directly or through a contractual agreement with a third party provider. A private entity may serve as a project sponsor by providing the local match for the project, but the applicant must be a public entity which is ultimately responsible for stewardship of the award and its outcomes. Public transit, as defined by the program, is not limited to traditional scheduled fixed route service, but may also include other modes which are open to shared ride use by the general public. Before completing a grant application, applicants must develop the project for which funding will be requested. Three steps must be completed before you'll be ready to craft your grant application. Identifying needs, engaging partners, and determining costs. FDOT is authorized to fund service development projects that will improve system efficiencies, ridership, and or revenues. Therefore, the identified needs must align with one of these three improvements in mind. Auxiliary benefits, for example, a reduction in the environmental impacts, may also be realized and identified in the application. But the primary purpose of this project must address one of the three authorized categories. The proposed project should serve to address the identified need in some way. Service development projects specifically may involve the purchase or implementation of new technologies, services, routes, or vehicle frequencies, special transportation services, and or other such techniques for increasing service to the riding public or improved transit system operations, maintenance, or marketing. Service development projects should be formulated in cooperation with interested partners or stakeholders. Stakeholders may be both internal and external to the applicant's organization and may or may not contribute funding to the project. At a minimum, service development projects must be justified in the recipient's transit development plan, also known as the TDP, or Transportation Disadvantaged Service Plan, known as the TDSP. We'll discuss these plans and this requirement in more detail later in the presentation. Once you have identified your agency needs and formulated a project to address them in a collaboration with your stakeholders, the full cost of the project must be determined. It is important to consider not only the upfront cost of procurement or the first year of operations, but also costs associated with ongoing operations and maintenance. Proposals should assume the project's duration will not exceed the maximum allowable time as defined by the program procedure. Depending on the type of project, this may be two or three years, though a shorter project timeline may be required at District 5's discretion. Both capital and operating awards are eligible for 50% funding participation under the Service Development Program. Awards may fund up to 50% of net project expenses 
after deducting federal participation. Another important cost factor to consider is that this program requires successful projects to be continued by the grant recipient after the award period without additional service development program funds. Applicants should be cognizant of this fact at the time of application and establish a plan to continue without state assistance after the grant period ends. Once your organization decides to submit an application, a plan should be to complete all steps within the required time frame. It is a good idea to host a kickoff meeting with your diverse group of collaborators. Use this meeting to discuss the project concept and delegate application development tasks to responsible parties. Next, you should finalize the award request type and dollar amount. Collect supporting data from internal and external sources. Write the application, paying careful attention to all requirements. Obtain any necessary approvals, including a board resolution and a local funding partner commitment. Have your authorized representative sign the completed application. Then you'll be ready to submit the completed application. All application materials must be submitted to FDOT District 5 by 5 p.m. Friday, June 5, 2020. Please send the completed application package to Joe Santiago, Transit Project Coordinator at joe.santiago at dot.state.fl. US. Please limit the application components to the maximum word limits specified in the guidance document where applicable. These are newly implemented word limits for the 2020 grant year replacing the overall page limit for the grant application package as a whole. Supporting documentation included as attachments may be combined with the main application document or maintained as separate files with clearly identifiable and consistently referenced names. If the application package is too large to send through regular email, you may use your organization's file sharing system if it's accessible by the FDOT. Otherwise, you must request a file transfer appliance upload link from Kayla Finch via email at kayla.finch at dot.state.fl.us by May 29th 2020. As a discretionary program, service development project evaluations and award decisions reflect not only the project's adherence to procedural requirements, but also its alignment with state and district-wide priorities. Each eligible project proposal received will be evaluated and scored across four criteria. This scoring system is new for the 2020 grant cycle. The first criterion is project type. This is an objective value based on project type or types being proposed by the applicant, weighted 15 points. The second criterion is fiscal and managerial capacity. This is a subjective score of project risk based on the provided risk assessment information, the applicant's prior performance, and the evaluator's overall impression of the applicant's capability to successfully carry out the project as proposed. This factor also includes certainty of local matching fund availability and commitment. The fiscal and managerial capacity score is weighted 25 points. The third evaluation criterion is application quality and completeness. This is an assessment of the extent to which the application meets all component requirements and the overall quality of its contents. The application should be clear to the extent that it anticipates and preemptively responds to questions that a logical external reviewer could be expected to raise. Numerical measures and values cited should be consistent and accurate. Project cost and schedule should be clearly outlined and reasonable with justification provided where necessary. This factor is weighted another 25 points. The last criterion is the project proposal. This is a general favorability score based on the project's overall merits in accordance with the program purpose of applying a new or innovative technique to improve or expand public transit systems efficiencies, ridership, and or revenues. Factors informing this score may include a general impression of innovation or originality, transferability, and replicability, previous and planned coordination with stakeholders, the extent of benefits to the public, and the project's prospective ability to address and improve upon stated needs. The project proposal carries the heaviest weight of the four criteria at 35 points. 
the combined total score of each of the four criteria will determine a project's prioritization for award relative to the other proposals evaluated for the same application period. After the June 5th application deadline, the FDOT District 5 Office of Modal Development staff and consultant advisors will review proposals and determine recommendations. Each evaluator will independently assign scores based on the four criteria before convening to finalize application scores and make funding prioritization recommendations. If the project is recommended for award, FDOT District 5 will submit the proposal to the FDOT Central Office for final review and approval by Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. Before an award is executed, FDOT District 5 may request a site visit to an applicant's place of business. The site visit will provide a venue for the applicant to discuss the proposed project in greater detail with FDOT representatives and for FDOT to provide technical assistance in specific compliance areas as needed. Project funding, which has been approved by central office, will then become available on July 1st, 2021, which marks the beginning of state fiscal year 2022. Applicants should assume that an award execution will take place no sooner than this date when selecting projects and developing implementation schedules. After July 1st, a Public Transportation Grant Agreement, or PTGA, will be executed. The PTGA is a contract between FDOT and the applicant which defines the project scope, deliverables, and FDOT participation. The PTGA will include all years of project funding at one time, but will outline the two or three year schedule over which funds will be expended. Funds for eligible expenses incurred on or after the PTGA execution date will be paid out on reimbursement basis upon the grantee's submittal of complete and accurate expenditure invoices. The required invoicing intervals for operating awards will be agreed upon and specified in the PTGA and must be no less frequent than quarterly. Progress reports described in greater detail later in the presentation must be submitted on a semi-annual basis throughout the life of the project. While the award is active, FDOT District 5 will visit each recipient annually at its place of business. More frequent on-site monitoring requirements may be specified in the project proposal, in the PTGA, or as determined necessary by FDOT. The purpose of these annual site visits will be to consult with the recipient on the reported progress for meeting project objectives and milestones. After the award period has ended, the recipient will submit a final invoice and final progress report within 120 days of contract expiration. We now begin the application component section of the webinar. There are two documents that you must use concurrently to complete a successful grant application. The first is the guidance document. This document serves as the primary source for information and guidance related to the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 Public Transit Service Development Program application process for the 2020 proposed solicitation period. It includes general program information, including eligibility requirements, compliance requirements, instructions to complete each application element, and resources and links. The second document is the grant application itself. The application is provided in a PDF format so you can type your answers directly into the document and insert attachments as needed. Be sure to check back with the guidance frequently when completing the application. If you have submitted a service development application in previous years, you'll notice some significant updates to the application for 2020. These changes include an FDOT certifications and insurances section, a section to self-report on information to contribute to FDOT's risk assessment. A stakeholder involvement table to organize and clarify stakeholder roles in the project. Updated budget templates to align with the PTGA budget exhibit format. And a funding source detail table to describe all of the entities contributing funding to the project. Now we'll review each of the required application elements in detail. This includes the applicant information section, project description, stakeholder involvement, project budget, implementation plan, and project schedule. 
The first section is applicant information. All identifying data requested in the applicant information table must be completed. This includes Data Universal Numbering System, or DUNS, and My Florida Marketplace Vendor Numbers. These numbers are required to enable contract execution and fund disbursement. You'll also be asked to describe your agency's existing and proposed transit service areas. The proposed project service area is where the proposed project activity will take place. If the project will benefit the entire transit system, this area may be the same as the existing transit service area. A grant contact and an authorized representative must be identified. The grant contact will be the main contact to answer questions and provide information regarding the grant application. The authorized representative is an individual authorized to certify application components and execute award agreements, typically the executive director or position of equivalent authority. The FDOT certifications and insurances section is a written insurance that all FDOT grant program requirements will be met. It includes important insurance, maintenance, accident reporting, audit and oversight review requirements. This certification is a new addition to the 2020 application but it does not introduce any new compliance requirements. Instead, it serves as an upfront index of the statutory and procedural requirements, which will be agreed upon during execution of the eventual PTGA if the project is selected for award. The authorized representative identified in the applicant information table must sign the certification and insurances. The final subsection under applicant information is the risk assessment information section. For all grant programs under its purview, the FDOT continuously assesses recipient performance and strives to ensure that limited grant dollars are directed to the programs and projects where the greatest benefit to the public can be realized. With effective management systems and financial controls in place, an agency will be better prepared to carry out a project without encountering major fiscal or managerial pitfalls that could compromise the project's success. With these considerations in mind, the department has implemented a risk assessment process during each application review period. The risk assessment will directly inform the fiscal and managerial capacity scoring criterion by evaluating an applicant's financial stability, management systems quality, performance history, and audit reports. The risk assessment information section of the application provides applicants with the opportunity to present information that demonstrates its overall fiscal and managerial capability to reviewers. You'll be asked to describe your organization's structure, staff expertise, anticipated organizational changes, and prior experience carrying out similar projects. Your organization capacity to maintain compliance should be demonstrated by identifying any recent audit or oversight report findings and describing how they were resolved. The project description is where you'll describe your funding request and make the case for award. Overall, this section should provide evidence that the proposed project is consistent with your agency's established needs and priorities and that the planned project scope includes all component activities necessary for successful implementation. The first part of the project description narrative should include a purpose and need statement. In developing the project, you likely reference existing plans, studies, and initiatives to establish evidence of the existence and priority of the need your proposal exists to address. Make sure that those findings are reflected in your narrative. Your project purpose, may be specific to your organization as it ties directly back to addressing and resolving the identifying needs. However, remember to clearly explain how this project specific purpose is consistent with the service development program purpose of improving systems efficiencies, ridership, and or revenues. After you've established a purpose and need, the second component of the project description is the scope of activity. This description should include all operational activities, services, and or capital acquisitions that will take place as part of the proposed project. Be sure to describe all activities in a manner that facilitates reviewers' understanding of how each requested budget line item connects and contributes to the overall project. The next step toward completing the project description is identifying the project type, which then determines the maximum duration of the funding period. You may select up to three project types that most accurately describes the activities that will make up your proposal. Projects may be classified as technology, new mode of service implementation, new route or service area implementation, improvement to or expansion of existing service, and or marketing. 
Examples of each project type are included in the application guidance document for your reference. The maximum allowable funding period varies between two and three years, depending on project type. Regardless of project type, projects may be funded for less than the maximum duration at the FDOT project manager's discretion. Points will be assigned based on project type as shown in the table. The assigned scores will be normalized to maximum of 15 points. Next, you'll be asked to describe the project location in a clear and concise manner. This may include a list of potential trip generators and activity centers to be served. Include a color map as an attachment if applicable. The map should be dated and contain all standard map elements and service information relevant to the proposed project, including a north arrow, scale bar, legend, and relevant feature labels. The final component of the project description is the goals, objectives, performance measures, and targets. The goal should generally align with those defined in the TDP that support the project, but may be more specific to fit the proposal. A goal is a long-term purpose behind a program or project. In the example shown from the Transit Cooperative Research Program Research Report 205, this broad goal is simply mobility and accessibility. An objective is a tangible, measurable strategy or implementation step toward a goal. Your project objective should specifically identify results expected from the project's implementation. In our example, the selected objective is to improve access to services by low-income riders. Next, you'll need to explain how each objective's progress will be assessed by defining at least one performance measure to be used in assessing project outcomes. The chosen measure in the example is to increase the number of participants in a low-income fare program as a percentage of low-income riders. A target is the specified desired change in the performance measure value. Target should be based on prior experience, industry literature, or otherwise reasonable expectations. The example target is to increase program participants on a quarterly basis by 5%. The last element in this section is the data source. Here you'll describe how your organization will obtain the data necessary to assess whether targets are being met. In the example, our agency's customer service department already provides monthly program participation reports, which can be easily assembled into quarterly evaluations. If no data collection process for your chosen measure exists at the time of application, describe the process that will be implemented upon award. The next section of the application is stakeholder involvement. As discussed earlier in the presentation, a broad group of stakeholders should be consulted throughout the process, including agency leadership, staff from multiple departments, clients and passengers, and partner organizations. Your agency might already coordinate with some of these groups through its regular responsibilities, but other groups may require special outreach efforts. A new requirement for this year's application is the stakeholder involvement table. Applicants must use this table to identify by name each stakeholder organization or agency involved in or supporting the proposed project. For each stakeholder, the relationships to the project should be summarized. Stakeholders may include, but are not limited to, project sponsors, members of the community, and planning organizations. Internal agency sections or units involved in the project may also be included to highlight coordination activities and interdepartmental contributions. Provide evidence of commitment in any available form, including letters of support, formal declarations, or adopted board resolutions. Include relevant supporting documentation as attachments. Stakeholders who have made a funding commitment to the project should be identified in the next column. Space is also provided for any general comments that do not fit in the other categories. As discussed earlier as part of project requirements, projects submitted for funding should be justified in the applicant's TDP or TDSP. Once you have identified the supporting transit plan by name, date, and adopting entity, cite the section or page of the plan that references the project or the need your proposal serves to fulfill. A TDP is a locally adopted transit planning document with a 10-year planning horizon. Prepared by the public transit provider, in cooperation with its corresponding planning organization. The TDP serves as a basis for defining and planning the implementation of projects to fulfill public transit needs. 
A TDSP is a plan that each community transportation coordinator or CTC is required to develop and maintain per Florida Commission for the Transportation Disadvantage Guidelines. A TDSP has a five-year planning horizon and includes elements which are similar to the TDP but are specific to services provided to transportation disadvantaged populations. If your agency does not have a TDP or TDSP but is otherwise an eligible applicant, you must coordinate with the local public transit agency to discuss the proposed project and request its inclusion in the next plan update. The adopting agency retains the authority to approve or deny the project's addition to the plan. If coordination is not complete by the time of application submittal, include a letter from the TDP agency expressing commitment to include the project in its next TDP update. If the project is supported by a local plan other than a TDP, cite the plan name, adopting body, adoption date, and relevant page numbers on which support for the project is reflected. These may include comprehensive plans, congestion management plans, or other local plan types. An important implicit stakeholder group for any service development project comprises of peer public transit agencies who may benefit from the demonstration of new or unique services, technologies, or methods. In the benefit to other systems section, you'll be asked to discuss the potential benefits to other transit or transportation systems that may result from the proposed project. Questions to ask yourself to aid in formulating this response may include, can other agencies replicate or learn from some unique or innovative aspect of the project? If so, how? How will the successes or failures of this project be shared with other agencies? Be specific, which industry organizations and networks will be leveraged? Is there a regional component to the project? Does the project enable or improve intermodal and or interagency connectivity? Projects with statewide implications may be eligible for more than 50% state financial participation. If your proposal includes a request for more than 50% state participation, you must include a narrative outlining these statewide implications. The project budget included in your application must include a local match of at least 50% of the net project cost. The net project cost is determined by deducting any project generated revenues and federal funds from the gross project cost. The local match may be generated by the applicant agency or another non-federal funding source. This year, we have added budget table templates to the application, one for the capital budget categories and the other for operating. For projects with an anticipated duration exceeding one year, the budget table should be repeated and labeled for each year funding is requested. Why hourly rates may be used to estimate cost and provide justification, the project budget must be shown on a direct cost basis by line item category. All funding sources that will be used toward the project, including any federal funding deducted to calculate the award request amount, should be included in the application project budget. Itemized justification must be provided for all project costs. The itemization should leave no question to the reviewer as to how the project costs were generated. The funding source detail table is a new component of the 2020 application period. The table provides space for detail on each funding source contributing to the project budget. Each source should be identified as federal, state, or local. The specific agency or program, if applicable, should be entered in the source column. Next, provide information on the status of the funds including anticipated availability timeframe, limitations, or contingencies. The dollar amount associated with the source should be entered in the final column. The certification of funding commitment may be a resolution or letter of commitment from the governing board or chief financial officer of the entity or entities providing the 50% local matching funds. In addition, commitment by the funding partners must certify that the partners will continue the project if it is deemed a success. The financial responsibilities of all involved entities should be described in the space provided. If any agency other than the applicant will take on the financial responsibilities, please provide their contact information and describe the roles or tasks for which that agency will be responsible. This section must include a breakdown of federal funds, fares, other sources of income, 
and propose state financial participation in the project. The final component of the project budget is a financial analysis. This may be a benefit cost, fiscal impact, or economic impact analysis, depending on the proposed project type and objectives. Optionally, you may complete your analysis using an Excel-based tool, TransValue, developed by FDOT District 5. The tool and its associated guidebook can be accessed at cfgis.org. After completing the analysis, describe the results and any apparent implications, such as whether the project will produce any return on investment or how the results compare to those of potential alternatives. The implementation plan should describe the proposed methods and sequence of actions that will take place to carry out the project. Identify all major milestones and evaluation points. Show how the project is ready to go, meaning that it can be implemented in the proposed timeframe. Different project types may have different implementation program steps to take into consideration. For example, if the project budget includes marketing activities, be sure to include any marketing plan milestones within the overall implementation plan. This section should also acknowledge any impacts that the proposed award would have on your transportation program. Showing that your agency has a plan in place to address new or changing circumstances that may be introduced by the award will significantly strengthen your application. The operational responsibilities narrative should include a list of specific actions to be taken by each responsible party to meet the project objectives and requirements. This includes an explanation of your agency's existing compliance program, along with changes that it will implement to address any newly applicable requirements associated with the Service Development Award. The project schedule must be included in both narrative and table format. The schedule should be realistic and achievable, and should include service initiation date, marketing efforts, special events, and evaluation points. The time it will take to develop the proposed service must be explicitly built into the project timeline. Any updates to the project schedule should be communicated with FDOT as soon as they are known, even prior to award notification. Progress reports should be customized to suit the selected project type and identify performance measures. Generally, the report must include new data points for the reporting period and any supporting documentation. The first progress report will be included with this application. It will include a discussion and or data presenting the baseline existing conditions for each performance criterion measured at the time of application submittal. If awarded, progress reports on the project deliverables and performance measures will be due to your FDOT project coordinator every July 30th and January 30th while the contract is active. At the end of the project, a final progress report will accompany the final invoice. The final report will include an evaluation of the attainment of the goals and objectives, the reason any goals were not met, the benefit accrued by the agency, and statement of the agency's intent to continue with the service demonstrated. Finally, the invoice schedule must be completed for all operating project proposals. You'll be asked to select whether your agency will submit invoices on a monthly, quarterly, or other agreed upon basis. That concludes a review of the FDOT District 5 service development application for the 2020 application period. Now to review some final reminders and deadlines. All service development applications are due to FDOT District 5 by 5 p.m. on Friday, June 5th, 2020. Applications must be submitted electronically to joe.santiago at dot.state.fl.us. If you need to request a file transfer appliance link for secure large file transfers, please make your request to Kayla Finch via email at kayla.finch at dot.state.fl.us by Friday, May 29th, 2020. Late applications will not be accepted. Thank you for participating in this training session. Please reach out to your FDOT project coordinator with any questions.